Greetings, Internet. I'm Danny Danger, and this is my poll list for March 12th. Mark said I wouldn't sing it, but it did. Last week's dog title on my poll list gave me the ooky feels, so thank God Beasts of Burden is swooping in with the save with a new one shot this week. The Hunters and Gatherers one shot starts off with the gang of detectives being chased by an invisible monster. Brian asked me what I actually thought of Rover Red Charlie number four. Again, they got me back to these emotional pet feels. I wish that they would just decide whether they want the comic to be gross or whether they want the comic to be gut-wrenching. In Powerpuff Girls number seven, all the monsters from Monster Island are partying in Townsville for Monster Day, and they're kind of destroying it. And don't think that it's not lost on me how funny it is that this issue is coming out the same week of South by Southwest. I'm all caught up just in time for East of West number 10 with Death and the Ranger hot on their son, on their son. They have a son together. This is very romantic. Death and the Ranger are hot on the trails of Death's son. This series is so good, you guys. The first issue of Mercenary Sea did a really good job of setting up that adventure vibe. And is it just me or when you read it, do you get flashbacks to Archer and Sea Lab 2021? Anybody? Anybody? I'm definitely picking up the Mercenary Sea number two. See the venture, get into more adventure stuff. Yeah. Danger Zone. Dear Marvel, can we please have an issue about Gambit's cat? I mean, come on, Pizza Dog got an issue. I'm just saying, it would be wonderful. In all new X Factor number four, the team fights danger. Not me, the danger room. But on the cover of the comic, she's wearing the Serval Industries jumpsuit thing. Does that mean she's gonna be part of the team? I'd watch that sitcom. The trial of Jean Grey continues in all-new X-Men number 24, which starts off with King Jason of Spartax. For some reason, I keep getting this flash to Sean Connery and Zardoz, and I have no idea why, <laughs> except that my brain is very upset with me. <laughs> Laying some pretty heavy emotional blow stuff on poor Jeannie. Meanwhile, the Guardians of the Galaxy and the other X-Men are trying to bust into the Shi'ar ship. Very action-packed, considering they've managed to drag it out over five issues. <laughs> Is there a gaping hole inside of my cell phone ringing while we're shooting? Is there a gaping hole left inside of you where Avengers Arena used to live? Well, Dennis Hopeless is back to torturing teenagers in the Marvel Universe, so don't you worry. In Avengers Undercover, five teenagers from the Marvel Universe are going to your mom's house for cookies and biscuits. So cookies and biscuits are the same thing. Uh. In Avengers Undercover number one, five teenagers from the Marvel Universe will go undercover with the Masters of Evil to put themselves in more situations that are tempting to them whether or not they want to be good guys or bad guys because Hopeless likes to toy with us like this. I love it. Hawkeye number 17 is the sign language issue because Clint has gone temporarily deaf because of his and Barry's meeting with the clown. Oh man, I bet the tracksuits are thinking that now is a really good time to take advantage of the Barton brothers, right, bro? I love the lineup on Secret Avengers number one, and I really enjoyed the last Secret Avengers number one. Why are we doing a redo again? Oh yeah, so I'll buy this title. <laughs> anyway, the first few pages showed some artwork that I really dug, and great use of the Hawkeye bleeping system. Oh, Clint Barton, you don't need no underpants. <sighs> This is an incredibly long pull list this week. Can't forget about Batman Little Gotham number 12, Coffin Hill number six, let's see, Black Widow number four, and Captain Marvel number one. Before we get to some comments from last week, be sure you like this video, share, subscribe. Hey, go check out Kelly Nova. Her closet cosplays have been off the hook lately. And Amanda Dawn, talking about Disney Star Wars. Both Chris Sanchez and Chris Adams asked me last week if I was picking up Forever Evil number six. Well, Chris's, I'll tell you that I'm not. And do you know why? Because Dan Didio is a bully and he likes to bully poor Nightwing, who is one of my favorite imaginary hero people who doesn't deserve to get bullied and I don't like it. No, really, if you're gonna kill him, it's taking forever, you're just sort of dancing around, maybe killing, maybe you'll kill him, maybe we'll just torture him. Just do it already if you're gonna do it. That's why I'm not reading Forever Evil. <laughs> Was that a reason or a rant? <laughs> Thanks to Austin Books and Comics. Oh, that's what he told me to say. Thanks, Austin Books and Comics. You guys are great. Let's start over and do that one more time, but better. But better, okay.